You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody, welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting, at least we hope so, Options Insider Radio Network. You guys know the drill by now in terms of how to found us, or excuse me, how to find us. <laughs> been a long show week listeners uh you guys know how to find us of course the website theoptionsinsider.com get all the good stuff from the network going back to uh all the way back as far back as you want to go really uh, all the way back to 2007 if you can believe it including some shows that are no longer on the network and new ones has been a healthy mix over those years go check out see what you missed and of course as always, you can always get us via the iTunes, the tune-ins, the Pocket Cast, all that good stuff. Or just grab our mobile app. It's got it all baked in there as well. If you have questions, suggestions about the app, hey, we don't build it. So you guys hit us up with all ideas. That's great. We pass them along to the people who we do we license it from. So it's not exactly our app. But we love your feedback. Uh, we know things uh, can always be better. and We're always working uh, to make them better. And, of course, however you listen, including live, you can join us live every Friday, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern via Mixler, and we could bring you on to the old program here as well. So you can listen, ask questions, join, see how the sausage is made. Either way, uh, we're looking forward to chatting with you guys. And speaking of chatting, let's see if we can get chatting uh, with my volatility cohort, the partner in crime over there in the world of all things volatility, Mr. Greasy Meatball. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com by way of Carmen Line, but looks like he's having some connectivity issues here. So we're going to keep on rolling to the show, and then we'll bring him on during the volatility review. It's time for the volatility review. This is indeed the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is going on in the world of volatility from a trading, trending, volatility, trends, unusual activity, all that good stuff type of, of stuff. You know, looking listeners here, I'm just doing a little behind the scenes housekeeping here to make sure everything is working out so our hosts and co-hosts can join us on the old program there we go let's see if that helps there we go all right and it is an interesting day an interesting week here on the old volatility views program you know we were predicting and i apologize by the way if you tuned in to last week's show and it was hard to understand hard to hear uh, don't blame me blame the meatball we did that at the option pit pro trader summit and it was i think you could say a wee bit noisy there uh, in the background they're a boisterous group those pro traders, I like to call them the crazies, and I think a lot of them even will freely admit uh, to that. And uh, they were indeed having a good time while we were doing the show, and it was uh, it was audible, shall we say, in the background. So if you didn't make out everything there, uh, I do apologize. But then again, uh, that's what happens when you're doing shows in front of a bunch of crazies. But fast forward to today, we are coming at you live Friday, June 22nd. Hard to believe we're so far through June already, and it's kind of a mixed bag out here 
on the old street with uh, the Dow kind of rally home mode uh, up about three quarters of a percentage point or quite close to it. The S&P up a little less than half of a percentage point, about 11 handles and change. Uh, the tech heavy NASDAQ actually unched on the day. So it is another one of these days where the markets are somewhat split and it kind of depends what you like to trade exactly what is lighting it up for you out there. And of course, uh, with all this uncertainty, on the old day, and all a little bit of mixture across the day, we're seeing VIX kind of uh, taking it back in. After all, it has been one of those weeks where VIX was kind of rallying uh, almost in spite of itself. We talked about it a little bit yesterday on the option block that given what we saw on the futures and everything else going on out there in the term structure, uh, the, the huge move we saw in VIX cash was I think a little bit head scratching was a was a nice way euphemistic way <laughs> to put it, and uh, we talked about it actually yesterday on the option block. I think our old pal the Rock Lobster uh, was saying that he was looking for, uh, given the fact that uh, where Vix had set up, that uh, looked like he was expecting a 50 handle move within the next few sessions. Not quite seeing that today. We're seeing about 11, 12 handles, but still, uh, he said over a couple of sessions. So we'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he's got a few more sessions for it to add up. But so far, at least, things are moving and shaking out there. VIX Cash, like we mentioned, uh, coming back down after being at some rarefied lofty heights uh, earlier in the week. Hit today even hit a high of about 14 and a half, 1460. And earlier in the week, we got as high as about 40, yeah, same level, about 14. It's actually, no, 15, 18. We actually broke the 15 handle at one point. So we were looking uh, pretty tumultuous there earlier in the week. This is kind of the endless give and take, the yin and yang that continues from the trade wars and our friend Mr. Trump and his counterparts over there in China and overseas in Europe continuing to ratchet up the talks on trade wars and, of course, uh, the market feeling the impact as a result. So it's been a weird one. We thought we were hoping maybe a lot of this was in the rearview mirror. And then, of course, it kind of comes roaring back uh, with a vengeance. But for all of you who wanted a little bit of all, maybe not this much this quickly, but still all of you who wanted a little bit of all, uh, you got it this week. You know who wanted vol, by the way. A lot of you guys have been writing in. We, we joked about it on the show last week, but uh, you guys have been inundating us with questions about our old friend, uh, Mr. 50 Cent. So we can we could start there, actually, while we're waiting for the greasy meatball to get his act in gear here in terms of what's been going on out there in uh, 50 Cent. Like, yes, he is back. A lot of people have been writing about it, Bloomberg and others. Uh, kind of a bit of a slow time as well, so probably indicating some of that uh, going on as well. But he gets a lot of traction. We talked about him last year. Of course, this is the infamous buyer of many, many upside calls, usually around the 50-cent premium level, hence the name, hence the moniker. And he is back. And he is back with a gusto. In fact, I joked yesterday on the option block that why did VIX pop so hard? Well, because 50 Cent is back. <laughs> and so uh, he kind of leaves an interesting volatility wake going on behind him, and he is back. We talked about it last week. He was buying 50,000 lots at a clip, 20,000 lots, uh, buying quite a few. Some of them were 49 cents, so I don't want to unfairly malign him. He was trading all the way down to 49 cents and below. But it is worth noting, I think other people have been writing about it, including Bloomberg, a little bit of a different volatility regime for him this time. The last time he was really gobbling up calls, and the, really the only time it actually really worked for him spectacularly was back in February when he had all those on. Uh, back then, he was buying calls around the 21 strike, uh, so a little bit of a different regime. So that means VIX only had to pop through 21 uh, for him to start making money on those calls. Uh, this time, he's got to go all the way out to 27. So we're in a little bit different regime. That's where 50 Cent buys you. 50 Cent. Oh, 50 cent. <laughs> That's where 50 Cent's to use proper grammar, buys you in the vol space these days. So a little bit of an interesting uh, regime. Again, we talked about him before. He's obviously hedging something else. So people come in here writing these histrionic articles about why he's just nakedly, uh, nakedly specking to the upside of VIX. Uh, interesting stuff, but not exactly where we lean. We also did see some people writing in for us with this article talking about our friends over there at Macro Risk Advisors. We'll have to get them on the show one of these days. Just if no, if no other reason to explain to them that we here on the Vol View Show are the ones who dispense the monikers in the volatility space. Uh, but they, uh, they like to call the VIX whale. They like to call them the VIX elephant, which is clearly incorrect. Uh, but they also came out, they were recommending, instead of doing 50 cents dids, they, they came out with what they were calling, I believe, yes, the seagull spread, which is, I have to admit, 
a new name. I haven't heard that before. It's an old strategy, nothing new under the sun really in the option space, but they were recommending instead of buying uh, those 27 calls around that level that 50 cent was buying, uh, you come in, buy the vertical, the 17, 23 July vertical, and then that's just a vertical, so they can't call that a seagull. Then they say they turn around and also sell the July 12 put. So it's a vertical with a put kicker. They call it a seagull. I, I don't know why I would like to ask them that, so maybe that's a good reason uh, to get them on the program. But still, uh, interesting stuff. I certainly, of the two of the two outright positions, uh, the outright calls or indeed the seagull, if you prefer. Uh, I would definitely choose the latter over the former, <laughs> but still uh, interesting stuff out there. Also interesting, worthy of note is uh, I mentioned VIX has been rocking and rolling. It's our old friend VIX also rocking and rolling these days well north of 100, which you know if you follow the show, if you listen to it, you know how we break it down for when it gets north of 100 is when things start to get interesting out there in VIX land. We have been over that for some time, pretty much the entire week. We've been over the 100 level, which of late, you know, usually in these times we see VIX kind of have a floor of around 75 and an upper bound around 100 gets north around to 125. If things really start rocking and rolling, if it gets beyond that, that things are crazy. But north of 100, usually a good indicator that things are moving. And we're seeing it today got up to about one, nearly 108. 107 and a half uh, got up to 108 earlier this week on the 19th as well. So it has been vacillating around a lot. Seeing as we see, again, we're seeing a lot of vacillation out there in VIX land. So not perhaps surprising, uh, but VIX, one of our favorite indicators out there in all things VIX. Talking about VIX, let's move on to the futures as well. Like I said, the cash. Right around 13 and a half right now, the front month future we're seeing, well, front week really left, about five days left, uh, but just a little bit shy of 14, so about a half a buck premium out there in that first month's contract. And then uh, we get out there into two months out, and we've got, let's see what my screens will play along with me. Looks like we've gotten similar levels here of uh, yeah my screens aren't playing ball but somewhere <laughs> a little bit north of that as well out here vix options also looking uh pretty interesting we'll get to that in a wee bit as we break down all of that activity as well i do want to touch on a little bit as well now i'll get mr meatball's opinion on this as well a lot of you have been writing in as well about these tweaks that uh, they are proposing and making out there to the VIX settlement process. We've been out here outspoken many times on this program saying that there do need to be some tweaks. There needs to be more transparency. There need to be more players coming in to offset those imbalances that are going on out there in the VIX uh, futures around that settlement process and the whole VIX settlement process indeed. And they have said themselves at SIBO that one of the problems is fewer players, not enough players to really offset those imbalances. We proposed a few alternatives to that. Uh, the SEC and CFTC have announced investigations, as we've, we've discussed on this show. Now it looks like SIBO kind of trying to turn the tables on it a little bit. They're pushing back to the regulators and maybe not putting the ball in their court, but at least putting some of the onus on them, saying some of their, their some of the reasons that uh, the, the settlement process has as little liquidity as it does, again, saying a lot of the participants they've talked to are holding back because saying they come in to try to trade against these imbalances. They feel that uh, it's after, after the cutoff point. To re if they respond to these requests or for these big imbalances, they could be hit with a fine or indeed uh, some higher regulatory scrutiny. If you know anything about the prop trading world these days, liquidity providing world, the one thing they do not want is more, like, more regulatory scrutiny. So they're, uh, they're keeping their powder dry in that sense. So SIBO, in some sense, is laying some of the blame here at the feet of the regulators. I do want to get some folks in the SIBO on the show. Maybe get our old pal Russell back on uh, to talk exactly about what they're doing and why uh, they're taking this move. The SIBO came out here today saying the exchange understands that some market makers may hesitate to provide liquidity that could resolve order imbalances. As a result, this perceived risk may lead to reduced liquidity and may exacerbate the time it takes to open a series at a competitive price. So interesting stuff. They're not quite, I was hoping for a little bit more specificity on exactly what they plan to do and how they plan to fix this. I don't know if this is, I don't think this is enough to, to really stem the problem, but hey, more liquidity around that auction time uh, certainly could go a long way towards, uh, towards maybe 
stemming some of that belief. You know, some of the recent settlements haven't exactly been great. Didn't hear a lot coming back from the most recent one, so that perhaps is a sign that maybe we're heading uh, in the right direction, but still a lot of interesting stuff to be uncovered. I, I want to get them on here to talk directly about what they're planning to do, what changes they want to make, and then we'll see from there whether or not this is sufficient to satisfy the regulators and indeed to satisfy a lot of you out there who are perhaps quite reasonably uh, suspect. And we said before, if you're worried about that and you trade VIX on a regular basis, then, hey, just stay away from the settlement and uh, you're okay. On the other hand, people have said to us, and I understand this viewpoint as well, that settlement's a big part of the, of the actual contract. And in terms of the, if you can't rely on the actual closing value of this thing, then kind of what's the point? So I could kind of see that, that viewpoint as well, even though I think for you guys who are day trading, trading in, trading out, and that's a lot of you out there, I don't think this issue really is going to impact you either way. Just close out, roll. I know you already do like a lot of you, so it doesn't really, it doesn't really, shouldn't rate as high as perhaps it uh, it does on a lot of your radar. Uh, speaking of your radar and what you guys are interested in, and we've done a lot of digging recently into some of this Google search data. We did a little bit more of that this week to kind of break down what the heck you guys are interested in when it comes to all things volatility. And Google has that data, and thankfully they're willing to share it with us uh, through their Google Trends algorithm. And we're looking here at, uh, we thought we'd break it down by some specific products these days. More interestingly, one of the ones you guys love to hate and love to trade, that is VXX. And we're looking at the data from 2004 till present. Now we know VXX is not exactly uh, the entirety <laughs> of that time frame. Uh, so a little bit of a skewed data, but still, as you might expect, we saw interest uh, popping up in VXX, really starting to take off around that 2010 or so time frame, uh, which I think is understandable given the lifespan of that product. And then, of course, we saw some pretty dramatic spikes. And interestingly enough, the biggest spike, I don't think will come as a surprise to you, the 100 level, remember Google ranks their data, with 100 being the most interesting, and then number two, right behind with uh, with other points. So they go from 100 and they break it down from there. The 100 point being February 2018, no surprise there, and then coming hot on its heels June of 2016 with a 95% ranking, which is kind of interesting. Speaking of kind of interesting, he sometimes is at least kind of interesting. I think we're finally – I think he found his way out of the Costco. We are joined by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good. Where are you? Where are you hankering down today, sir? I am in our world headquarters in Chicago. I was stuck on a call for the Greenwood Project, unfortunately. I mean, fortunately for the Greenwood Project, unfortunately for Volviews. Indeed. Well, we just broke down a lot of good stuff. I'll get a chance to get some of your takes on it. First off, catch us up. How's your week been? What's catching your eye from a volatility perspective, sir? You know, it, it's been a weird one, hasn't it? You know, we just kind of, the market just kind of fluctuated. I think that's an understatement, sir. Yeah, the market just kind of fluctuated. We haven't done very much. You know, we've uh, the Dow's been kind of ugly, I guess. But um, the Russell 2000 been super strong. The S&P has been flat. And kind of everything has just kind of bounced around. It's been a uh, – a, it's been odd. I'll say that. It has been odd. Were you as surprised as your counterpart, the Rock Lops, yesterday by yesterday's – uh, shall we say uh, upside aggressive upside move in Vixland, and were you equally as buying into the fact that uh, something had to happen today to uh, really to really settle up the accounts? Yeah, it, we. I mean, yesterday's Vix move was really a little overdone, and so the options were we either move or we don't, and Vix comes in, and what we're looking at is we didn't move, and the Vix is coming in. Um, I think there is probably more downside for it. We're going into the 4th of July and the end of the quarter. Um, I am uh, not next week does not appear to be a great week to be a VIX bull. Yeah, this we're this is already a historical time where trade wars aside, you usually see ball settling in a little bit, shall we say. And now uh, with uh, you're right with everything else on the horizon. Uh, we shall see how that plays out. Speaking of how we'll see, I was just kind of talking, giving my thoughts on some of the, everyone's been hitting us up, Mark, as you might imagine, about uh, these these tweaks to the VIX, uh, which are yeah. kind of vague. They haven't really spelled out a lot, but they're SIBO kind of turning the tables a little bit on the regulators saying, hey, you're the reason nobody's playing in our auction process because they're afraid of getting fined. Uh, what are your thoughts on the most recent reasoning behind what's going on in the in the VIX settlement land? You know, I'd, I'd heard that 
from uh, a couple of players there. And I do know that they're trying to smooth it out. Um, one of the, you know, one of the things they're, they're kind of playing with is um, allowing for, uh, you know, call it, you know, it's not exactly the right way to describe it, but call it the a reopening of the auction process for those that want to take the other side in one fell in one sort of tr in one fell swoop of a trade, um, as opposed to having to have all these weird individual market orders that that may or may not get filled. Right. You know, the, the problem is the auction process closes at what, 820 or 815, um, allowing, you know, then you're uh, the only way to put more in is to do a bunch of individual market orders. Right. So uh, and that might not necessarily trade that print. So if we allow people to step in and really try and trade that print um, in one strip of options, then, um, you know, traders are able to more easily manage the exposure that that creates on getting filled on all or part of that, that trade. Yeah, you know, I think anything at this point is better than nothing. People have been looking for a little more specificity. Uh, I wouldn't mind a little bit more than th of that as well. But still, you know, uh, we've said before there is something to be what they said about the lack of liquidity. What what's causing that lack of liquidity is certainly <laughs> a cause of of debate. I think we've outlined what well, you outlined your idea before uh, for how to kind of treat that imbalance. This is at yeah. least, I guess, you can call this a half step towards that. They're Would you starting agree? to try. Yeah. yeah. That's something. So something is better than nothing. Uh, I think everyone agrees that uh, getting some handle, getting coming to grips with this issue, getting a, a settlement that is at least somewhat more reliable is in the best interest of everyone. The active retail, the pros, the SIBO, everybody wants to have a, a product. That, I mean, this is the product people like. They don't want to have to question <laughs> how it actually works and whether it's quote unquote being manipulated. Uh, that's you see, by the way, I got the uh, professor who wrote the paper on VIX. Uh, Mark now getting sinking his teeth into Bitcoin, whether Bitcoin was manipulated. So he's become he's become the manipulation professor down there in Texas, which is kind of interesting. Maybe I'll get him on the network to talk a little bit, excuse me, as well out there. But interesting stuff. We were talking right before you came on, Mark, as well, uh, mining some more of this uh, Google search data for what they're what people actually want and are interested in in the volatility land. And I was just laying it out right, right when you came on. So maybe you heard it. Maybe you, maybe you could cheat on this one. We'll see. I was laying out the top two data points for the most interest in the history of VXX back to 2004. Number one, this is by month, obviously. Number one was obviously February this year. That's the highest data point on their search mm -hmm. graph. Uh, but I wonder if you can pick what number two would be, uh, roughly a 95% of this February. What would your guess be for month and year? Uh, number, f sorry, so number two, maybe January 2009? Hmm. Not a bad guess. I'm looking here. That according to this data, that would be probably right about fifty percent of what uh, of what this okay. February was. So the actual almost number two, ninety five percent of the interest that they saw in February was June of 2016. Really, an odd. Uh, I would not have uh, picked that date off the top of my head. Uh, but uh, I'll have to go back and look and see uh, how much of a sell-off we got, how much of a move we got in VXX in that time. Uh, but clearly, June was where the action was. Uh, speaking of where that action is, Mark, we did a little bit more data mining to see where in the U.S. people are the most interested in volatility. Now, this is just the term volatility. We didn't get into products. We got into that in a little bit. So I'm looking here at the top five states with the most interest. Remember last time, the number one options interest, according to Google, was Maine. So these data points could be a little interesting. Just keep that in mind. If you had to guess, uh, guess, uh, guess the top five people, regions that are interested in volatility, sir. Uh, uh, what, was, what were my options? It was... Uh, All 50 states. I'll let you guess any of them. What are the five most interested in options, according to Google? I would guess and at least that... one of them you probably wouldn't guess. Maybe two. Maybe three. All right, and and is that on a a percentage basis? Yeah, it's a or per a, capita. A, so if there's a thousand uh, searches in each state, super, that's going to be super skewed. It's going to rate more uh, in South Dakota than it does in uh, California. Right, right. Um, all right. I'm going to say uh, Wisconsin. <laughs> they love cheese and volatility. Yes. Texas. <laughs> oh, Texas. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to say Iowa. <laughs> I'm going to say uh, New Jersey. I'll give you the hint. The, the number one one is one you probably would expect. I'll give you that. Chicago, uh, Illinois. Uh, close. Actually, New York. New York. New York. Yeah. The number two is, shall we say, um, 
Maybe Petter Fee might like it. Uh, you know, some hedge funds might like it. Uh, that was a hint. Delaware? No, a little bit farther north up the coast. Adjacent to New York, shall we say. Uh, Connecticut? Yes, there we go. Blue Bloods. Uh. Yeah. I said New Jersey. I thought I, I had the wrong side of New York. New Jersey is number three. There you go. And the number four all is right. Massachusetts. It's all the mutual so funds. all the Northeast Corridor. Yeah, pretty much. And then number five, the District of Columbia. So there now, you go. <laughs> that's not a state, though. That yeah, doesn't count. I agree. They call it a subregion here on this, uh, on this chart. So there you go. So I guess technically with that, you could have gotten 51. But uh, <laughs> there you go. If we break it down by VIX, so actually searching for product, it gets a little bit more specific. Uh, the first two are actually the same, New York and Connecticut. Uh, then number three is uh, our old Mecca there, Mr. Mark, uh, Illinois. So Chicago coming mm -hmm. in. Number four, New Jersey again. So Jersey getting that love, obviously. Uh, a lot of the data centers there. A lot of the firms actually have some, have some setups in that area as well. So the spillover from New York counts into New Jersey. And number five, Massachusetts again. Uh, so I don't know what they're doing uh, VIX-wise in Massachusetts, sir. Uh, but apparently enough to get them ranked. In terms of uh, Google interest, again, if if Maine could be the top option space state, then then you never know what to make of this data, sir. But interesting stuff. Since we're talking VIX, let's get into it. All things VIX options uh, today. A fairly light day. The ADB a little bit shy, half a million contracts right now. Uh, today, right about two twenty five as we're coming into uh, about halfway through the show here. About five to one calls over puts. Overall, the open interest has popped up a little bit more in terms of call interest. About three to one. It was about. 2.3 to 2.6 in our most over the course of the last couple of months. So coming up a little bit on the call side, some of that may be due to the recent pop we saw and people may be scrambling to get themselves some upside VIX action. Uh, Thursday, we saw about 328,000 pretty much every day this week, with the exception of Tuesday, of course, uh, was shy of that ADV. 423K on Wednesday. Tuesday, the big day, about 1.2, almost 1.3 million contracts lighting it up. Monday, also going into Tuesday, a pretty active 700. 123,000 contracts. So interesting stuff. Uh, Mark, do you have any issues uh, this week with uh, Tuesday and the activity we saw therein? You know, not uh, Tuesday. Yeah. Um, no, no, not really. It was just kind of weird, more weirdness. Uh, more the, you know, what was interesting is if you kind of watched markets Friday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, when, uh, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we had kind of these negative markets, Dow leading. The Russell was really strong, and we rallied. Um, then yesterday, the IWM was the worst performer, and markets never were able to recover. So uh, keep an eye on the run. Yeah, today's a rebalancing day, so uh, we'll be talking about yeah. that on Twifo in a little bit. I know we talked recently about recent settlements, Mark, where I think – I think kind of wonky is a technical term. Did you mm -hmm. did you did you feel as much wonkiness this this month this week, or a little more in line than you thought? Uh, it, it felt a little low, but not completely out of sorts. Uh, would be the way I would place that settle. <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's always going to feel weird in one direction. That's kind of the nature yeah, of the settlement a process. Bit, Everyone's always going to be unhappy, but at the very least, it, this it wasn't, one wasn't crazy. Insane. It yeah, wasn't it was, like you didn't feel like there was perhaps a uh, an invisible hand. On the on the uh, on the settlement this time, which is probably no. a good thing in uh, yeah, in retrospect. It, it, it's nice to it, it is beneficial to SIBO when there aren't two hundred thousand contracts traded in the direction of settle the 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 day and two or two prior. Yes, that is a, that is a helpful thing. Let's look down. Let's see what people actually were trading. Uh, what the big strikes in Vixland, a lot of things coming off the board, obviously, so things are going to be a little bit light. Uh, from an OI perspective this week, still here are the top 10 hot Vix strikes right now. Number one with a bullet, the July 20s, 195,000 contracts. Number two, July 25s, 171,000. Number three. The first put on our list, the July 14 put, 167,000. Number four, the July 21 calls, uh, about 166,000 there. Number five, AUG, first AUG on our list, the AUG 28s, 160,000 contracts. And then six or oh, five contracts less for the number six spot are the July 30s uh, with just six contracts shy of that buck 60 level. The 30 strike maintains its grip. 
It's fevered grip on the imagination of traders out there everywhere. Number seven, the July 17s, a buck 51. Number eight, the July 29s. So if the 30s were a bridge too far, there's a July 29s for you. 147,000 open there. Number nine, our second and last put on the list, the July 11s. Excuse me, a buck 46. And round out the top 10, back to August. Once again, the 30 strike, just uh, just monopolizing people's love. The AUG 30s, 143,000 contracts open there. About 6 million contracts outstanding. About 4.5 on the calls. About 1.5, excuse me, on the puts. Uh, Mark, uh, you see anything interesting catching your eye out there from an activity perspective this week, sir? Um, you know, there's a there's been uh, 50 cents back. I think we talked about that last week, right? 50 Cent is back. We did. talked about him earlier in the show as well. Uh, people were talking about it. We, a couple of interesting things I brought up. Uh, first off, you know, when he was buying last time in February, he was buying around the 21 range. That's what 50 Cent would get you. Uh, now you got to go up to 27. So it's a little bit of a different uh, game around that in terms yeah. of strike buying. Uh, and also, I want to get your thoughts on this. It's kind of funny. A lot of people wrote us in with this article about uh, – uh, our buddies over there at Macro Risk Advisors. I want to get them on the show just to kind of uh, – The MRA a, a, guys, they're very nice. Just to teach them, A, that we make the nicknames here on Ball Views, not them. And then, B, uh, that they had this – they came out – they said instead of trading the uh, – instead of trading 50 cents way and buying all those out-of-money calls, they said instead you should do our seagull spread. So I said to myself, oh, what the, the hell is a seagull spread? So I dug oh, into it a little bit. And what they, well, here's what they call a seagull spread, Mark. They said instead of buying – I think he was buying the July 27s, 50 cents, somewhere in that range, mm -hmm. or maybe AUG. They said, come in and buy uh, the July 17, 23 vertical, which is just a vertical. And then they say, yes. and then sell the tw July 12 put against it. So that's what they call a seagull Other, spread, a vertical a with seagull, a put kicker. otherwise known as a, a, a call spread versus put or a risk reversal. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. They, they, they named something that's already named. It's been named many times. Congratulations, MRA. Many times. We love you. Call vertical say, with a put kicker. You can call it many things. I, I love. I'm so pro MRA. I love them. They're a, a, a good group for the business. Um, I, I, ironically, we've never had them on the show, so we'll have to bring them that, on. Yeah, and it, their brains. you should. You should. So I'll tell you what I saw. Um, a really interesting combo. Every time VIX got kind of low, we saw a bunch of call buyers coming in, and every time it, it looked like it was running higher, uh, put buyers would would just go crazy. Um, so. There's uh, some decent open interest on the July 14s, the July 13s, and the 12 and a halfs, uh, and, and all the way down to the 11s. There's 145,000 open interest on the 11s. So there is some, uh, some interest kind of a, a, across the board on uh, downside, but then we've also seen a bunch of upside buyers. You know, your 50 cent, we saw. Um, a lot of guys buying call spreads. I've seen the 2860 go up, the the 40 calls. There's been an aggressive July 40 call guy out there. Um, you know, 10,000 of the 40 calls have traded today. Uh, but, yeah, you know, kind of the weird ones that have traded pretty actively are the July 28th, 29th, and 30s. Those are, you know, pr more than 100% out of the money uh, relative to the cash. And yet they are three of the – Heavy, heavy open interest in uh, in July. Um, speaking of so, speaking of weird trades, one to catch our eye this week, uh, just for I think to the weird size of it and the almost uh, it's almost a trade all trade. Uh, it was, went up on Wednesday. It was uh, five thousand two hundred and forty two. Uh, what? How many legs they got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven legs. Oh no, eight legs. Eight legs on this thing. Uh, we got. Uh, they started off with. Um, uh, 5,242 of the July 13 half puts uh, for buck 17. Again, all these are mid market. All these strikes have tons of OI listeners, so it's kind of hard to ferret out exactly what they were doing. And then uh, same number, 5,242 of the July 11 half puts, doing those for 21 cents. But they weren't done there. They came in the middle with the 12 half puts, not doing it on a ratio, so any sort of fly or anything like that. Just again, 5,242. Some more of a good old put strip uh, for 57 cents of those, but they weren't done there either. They came back and said, you know, we don't like this being a strike away from each other. Let's go into the half strikes. Uh, so let's go into the 13 puts as well, 5,242 of those bad boys. And then let's go the other side. Let's do the call strip as well. 
Uh, let's do the July 23 calls, 5,242 times for 40 cents. And then also, let's go back down the strain, chain a little bit. Let's go to the July 15s for 5,242 contracts, a buck 12 of those. Uh, and then uh, July 19th, 17s, excuse me, 5,242 of those for 82 cents. And then also the 19s for uh, 62 cents, 5,242 times. So I guess effectively, maybe what we have here, Mark, is a nice um, July 15, 19, July 15, 17, 19, 23 call strip with a, uh, what do we got here? Thir- 11 half, 12 half, 13, 13 half put strip all in July. Was that, uh, was that a Carmen line special, sir? That was all me. How did you know? No. The size had a it's ringing a, of uh, Carmen line to it. Yeah, it's an interesting trade, though. It, it really is. Yeah, I was looking for maybe one of those legs to be like a kicker, so you do a ratio or something, but none of that. It looks like it's just a straight up strip of uh, of both of both sides, both wings mm-hmm. taking all the strikes you can near at the money, and then then I guess we'll I guess we'll see what happens. You know, with this kind of size OI, it's always hard to tell if it's closing because uh, Vix is a beast when it comes to that stuff. But still, uh, this one has a whiff of opening, I think, and a little bit of whiff of weirdness as well. Speaking of the whiff of weirdness, uh, VXX always has that whiff about it. Yes. And it's <laughs> it is uh, had a weird week again this week. Of course, uh, rally home mode, then kind of coming back down as we are doing it here today. And my system is once again not playing ball with me, so I'm going to reboot here. But while we do that, uh, it was around the 34 level. Where are we right now in VXX, Mark? We are uh, right now. I have a 32.98. There we go. So we're coming in at 34, selling off a little bit of another handle or so uh, in mm-hmm. the intervening time as uh, VIX erodes and VXX erodes, perhaps uh, getting a little bit of level. Still, that brings us pretty much in line almost exactly with where we were last week. This time last week, we were at a 33, and we're at almost exactly 33 yeah, right we're now. The, so. And so think about this, and I think this is a strong point for – kind of what the issue is with VXX as a hedge. All right. For those that for those that don't believe me and Mark that um, you know it's not a great buy and hold. All right. Where did the S P settle, Mark? Here's a quiz. Without cheating, where did the S P settle on the 15th? So last Friday. No cheating. Uh, so last Friday, the 15th, that would be you think higher or lower than where we are today? I think it was we were at twenty seven sixty one right now. I'm pretty sure it was around this level, like maybe twenty seven sixty five, something like that. Yeah, the low for the day was twenty seven sixty one seventy three. So almost exactly where we are right but now. But remember, yes. but remember, we got a vicious rally um, in the back half of the day. Yes, and we only settled down three points to twenty seven seventy nine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, the here we are today twenty seven sixty two. And the VXX is lower than where we were. The, it, and so the S&P is off, call it uh, 17 points, and VXX has lost money. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's, that's what so you say. I think that's, you know, for people that are, trying, that are trying to wrap their head around how VXX works, I think that's really the best example I can come up with for um, kind of what's happening. Yeah, I mean, it has, sense? it has those spurts, and certainly we've said before is we don't uh, we don't do a lot of it, we don't caution a lot of it, but there are times when you want, especially if you have, you have a lot of downside in VXX, you might want to have a little bit of upside to offset that. We talked about ways to do that before. I think you guys spend a lot of time on that, and your VXX made easy, do you not? Um, we definitely talk about it. One of the things that makes VXX making easy is if you understand what I just went through. It'll be much easier for you if you accept the easiness of VXX going lower. <laughs> yes, there's there is a certain amount of ease to that. So yeah, all the Sturm and Drong we saw this entire week in VXX is effectively unched. Here we are with yeah. S and P, uh, not quite unched, but a little bit lower there, and uh, VXX is almost literally unched. So that doesn't if that doesn't bring it home to you in stark relief, then I don't know what will. Uh, the Jan took on that VXX where people are trading out there. Looks like a few more people are piling into those July 90s mark because that spread has uh, has grown a little bit 
in OI since the last time. I think they did 78-odd thousand of those. When yeah, we about I saw a few more trade this week. Yeah, it's 106,000 of the July 90s open now and almost 100,000, 99 of the July 70s. Uh, so maybe it's all of our friends who've been piling in selling it. They're driving that OI. <laughs> Everyone's been writing into us, I'm selling that. Uh, so maybe, maybe there's some of that going on. But uh, number one with the bullet, still the Jan 10 puts. Uh, which I don't know where those are at now. Two cents, three cents, something along those lines. <laughs> One cent, who knows? Uh, but still, two hundred and one thousand of those open. But the number two is that July call vertical. So, if you're interested in July upside, I don't know if you want to go that far. But uh, if you're interested, in, I think we have some listener questions about July upside later, so maybe we'll get some of that. Uh, but if you're interested in upside in uh, in VXX, you're not alone. At least to the tune of July getting. All, that's pretty much. I'm looking here. Oh, there are some other. There is one other call. Actually, there's two other calls. Actually, no, I'm gonna take it back. There are three other calls in the top ten for VXX right now. Number seven, the June seventy fives mark, uh, with four, about forty seven thousand open there. Number eight, the Jan twenty nineteen fifties. Um, I can get certainly get behind that more than I can uh, the, seven, the July seventies. Uh, Thirty nine thousand of those, and then number ten on our top ten are the June eighties. Not not too sure about those. Uh, Thirty five thousand open to those bad boys. So there's a more call playing going on out there of late than uh, than we've seen in a little while. So uh, read into that what you will, listeners. Meanwhile, you guys got some cues on the old brains. So maybe we'll get to some of those in some of the volatility voicemail. <laughs> It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL, posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options, or facebook.com slash the options insider. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Vol voicemail. I uh, got to mention, Mark, you won't hear those transitions, so just imagine them in your ah, head. But our, our audience am. hears them, and I hear them, and so that's more fun. Uh, but still, uh, <laughs> so if you're wondering, why am I in such a cocoon of silence? That is why, sir. It's, it's the prices to be paid when we're down here in the roving southern studio. Uh, let's see. Let's, click, let's check in on how our, how our Twitter question of the week is going. And, Mark, uh, people are... Uh, People are not in a premium buying mood. We've heard that from people. We asked them a, a premium buying. That's kind of a silly, fun premium buying question this week. And they're all about selling that premium. So don't worry, listeners. We'll get you some premium to sell and harvest uh, next week's question. But this week, Mark, we were asking them something fun, something silly in the spirit of what's uh, you know, otherwise outside of trade war been a relatively uh, weird, quiet, bizarre time. Uh, we said, hey, let's look, at, uh, let's look at some entertainment names and see which one of these entertaining stocks you actually may want to own some premium in. Uh, so we looked at some straightforward stuff, July at the money straddle. You can't get too nuanced in 140 to 280 characters, so we try to keep it easy for you guys. We said, strip just gun to your head, you got to buy some premium. Which of these July at the money straddles would you rather own in your portfolio? These are entertainment names, remember? So we gave you uh, Mark's favorite, WWE, that July straddle, right around 7 bucks earlier this week. Uh, the Win, so the Win Casinos Gaming Resorts, 12 bucks. Uh, the Sea World was right around two bucks, and Disney, which has had some uh, interest in movement and development with the whole Comcast uh, Fox deal of late, uh, that was pricing in about five bucks. I don't have where these stocks are right now, Mark, because I don't have exact. I know Disney's probably around a little bit less than five percent. The other percentages I don't have off the top of my head, but uh, I know maybe are you a WWE man? You want to buy that stock? Certainly has taken off of late, more than doubling in the last couple of months. I didn't even know it was public till about a month ago, so that shows how how in touch I was with the world of wrestling until recently. Uh, but uh, Disney also moving. Mr. Meatball, if you had to pick one of these straddles to own in your personal holdings, which would it be, sir? Hmm. Hmm. What are my options again? Give me put, put one more time for, for the WWE listeners. for seven bucks. That stock right now is a little, about, a little bit shy of 70, so a little bit shy of 10%. It's about 68 mm -hmm. bucks for WWE. World got, Wrestling Entertainment, yeah. Yes, and you got uh, Win. That's a $12 straddle. That stock right now is at a 170. 170. Yeah, so there you go. 
And then you got what well, we got SeaWorld next. That's a much cheaper one. Ooh. $2. That stock has, I think, had some rough. I think, I think their recent earnings were all right. Uh, that's yep. about that's, <laughs> yeah, that's about a 10% one as well. well Stocks let's get, 22 bucks. Well, well, here's here's what I'll say for SeaWorld. How, how did getting rid of the elephants go for Ringling Brothers? Yeah, you'd think. You know, Shamu was kind of their featured attraction. He was on the cups. He was on all the plush toys. Oh, yeah. Everyone loves Shamu. In fact, as I'm recording this, I can look out my window, and I, I, am, I can see. I can see the uh, the coasters at SeaWorld. We're that close to it. So uh, wow. maybe, maybe they're listening to this right now and have a sad face on I don't know. But the stock looks like it's doing all right of late. Since right. earnings on the 8th, it was 18 bucks. It's up about uh, it's up about four handles uh, from there, mm-hmm. so I'm about 25%. So it's had a good run, I guess. People yeah. are liking what they're doing. So, Mr. Meepo, all that a long way around to buy you some time. Which of these are you buying, sir? Uh, if I had to buy any straddle. I know you're a degenerate premium buyer. I know. I know. Well, hmm. Hmm. And all you were writing in, hey, can I sell the wings again? You can do whatever you want in your pretend Whatever mind, you want to do. As long as you're buying um, straddle. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's gonna be the, the one that's gonna have the most fireworks is win. I'll take win. Yeah, probably that one's been on the move. Also, the price has to get a little bit more bang for your buck. There yeah, and it's as it's, well. it's uh, that's been an ugly one. That's the ugliest chart. So I'll go with win. Yeah, it's about that goes like about four percent or so straddle there. So yeah, interesting uh, one there. I know you guys don't like buying premium. We heard from you loud and clear. So we'll give you a selling one uh, next time there. But yeah, I'm with you. You want a little bang for that? I kind of wish I had that WWE straddle a couple of months ago. That thing has been yeah. uh, off to the freaking races. Who knew uh, Fox and Universal were going to pony oh, up that's for a huge deal. pony up for entertainment wrestling, sports entertainment? Well, I mean, it's, it's live. So con- it is live content. Exactly. And it's and it's borderline sports. <laughs> uh, Just athletic enough. Yeah, it's it's athletic enough. Uh, and if you look at the top 50 programs that were viewed last year, what is it like? 48 of them are are sporting. Yeah, they uh, and they and they do pretty well, even on their middle and you know middle of the week random shows on USA. Yeah, so Fox dumping UFC, picking up WWE. I guess that says something about the value of their uh, and certainly their stock reflecting it. Off to the races there. So if yeah, you were, if you were early on the WWE trend, ballyhoo to you. Um, let's see, you got questions here from. Rick, Rick S. Got a pretty basic one. Good timing for this question, I guess. He wants to know, what exactly does it mean to roll positions the week of expiration? Obviously, we talk about this a lot. Uh, maybe we, we should clarify exactly what we say for some of the more the newcomers uh, to the show. We were just talking about it before when I said, you know, if you're worried about the VIX quote-unquote manipulation, then you can just roll to get away from that. And, uh, mm-hmm. of course, what that means, listeners, is quite frankly, you close out a position you have right now, usually done the week of expiration. You can do it anytime you want. Listen to our Option Block show or read some of our activity stuff on the website. You see people roll all the time for a bunch of different reasons, but a lot of it happens the week of expiration because you don't want to go through expiration for a variety of reasons. Maybe mm-hmm. it, in VIX, you don't trust the settlement process. You want to get away from it. Maybe yeah. you want to just extend and your positions where things things get a little turbulent around the settlement exercise kind of type uh, type process. So you don't want to you want to avoid that. You want to roll ahead of that. But you want to keep your positions intact. You just want to move them out. Mm-hmm. Maybe a week, mm-hmm. maybe a month, whatever the case may be. It's very literally closing one out and then reestablishing it in whatever time frame you want. The next week, next month, next year, whatever floats your boat. But it's a pretty. They call it rolling because you're kind of just keeping it alive. You're kind of moving it from one one uh, one expiration cycle to the next. Hence, you're not closing. You're just rolling. So uh, that's that's kind of where it is. And in big products oh, yeah. like SPX and others, that's actually an actively quoted thing. Oh, how's the roll looking right now? And that trades the roll? very liquidly. Yep. And that's a way to keep track of how things are looking. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, something if you're going to be trading any index products. Uh, you definitely want to have. Oh, yeah. The, I can tell you some great stories about uh, roll trading around uh, around expiration. Regale us. Regale us with one roll story. Oh, I don't know. Well, all right. So uh, I was working at an unnamed SBX firm, and we had a position where um, futures were uh, – it was uh, June futures were coming off, and – oh no, um, it was, uh, I want to say, a May expiration. So no, it wasn't a May expiration. Yeah, it was. It was a May expiration, and so we were trying to buy May. We had to – buy May and sell June. And the roll was trading like a quarter under. Uh, a quarter under, meaning that 
uh, you had to pay 25 cents to sell June. And I don't know. And we got a couple thousand done, but we had like another 9,000 more rolls to do. And the price kept moving and moving and moving where it got like, you know, down because everybody had the same position in the pit. It got down to like a half under or something like that. And the owner of the firm said, bah, fa, ba," and took on the print risk on um, 8,000 rolls. Because <laughs> why would you want to take that off? He's like, I'm not, paying, uh, yeah. I'm not paying a half under. That's too much. Yeah, yeah. So it just so happened that. Um, so the next morning, I'm on the line, and he is dumping minis, just 500 at a clip. Sell 500. Sell 500. And it just so happened, I, I don't know how the guy figured it out, but the print was, it was a low print for SPX. So the May-June roll that was trading a half under ended up trading a buck and a half. We uh, got legged into for a buck and a half or two bucks over. Oh. <laughs> it was... <laughs> So that's um, literally that was, rolling the dice. Listeners. That's a two, that's a two million dollar, uh, a north of two million dollar winner. Not bad. Not bad. That's not something you want to try to replicate. <laughs> that's, that's well, it, if it, it, it's not something you want to replicate unless you have the stones to back it up. Yeah. You know, we always used to get all that stuff. Just, it, it, usually that's what happens with the roll. It gets bid in whatever direction the pit all has it on. Right. So the earlier, yeah. earlier you can get it done, the better. Because, yeah, there's no mystery how everyone has to do it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and everyone's quoting the same thing. And uh, so, yeah, you get it done earlier. But sometimes, if you, you yeah, you get a little stubborn and you want to wait. And it can work out in your favor. It could also wipe out your uh, entire year in a few minutes. So, um, Correct. yeah, some fun, uh, fun roll stories. Uh, back there you go. There. You've been regaled. There you go. That's quite the regaling, sir. Well done. Um, let's see. Another telly. Telio, are there any long VIX vehicles that don't erode to zero? Well, I can think no. of a few <laughs> off the top of my head. Uh, well, I'm talking about, I think he obviously means like the ETP world, right? And, yeah, and the it, answer is no. Yeah, in that sense, the answer is no. Um, I think the future is. The ones that do it a lot slower. Yes, exactly. <laughs> if you want to go minimum exposure to that stuff, just go to the futures. Just don't even bother with uh, any of these Franken products that try to replicate them in some haphazard slapdash fashion and go, yeah. to, go to extreme lengths to do. I mean, look at the best example is probably what the VIX up, VIX down stuff, right? Look at or the yeah. stuff Whaley had to look at the look at the lengths they had to go to listeners to try to replicate that in some sort of meaningful fashion. And it, it, uh, that prospectus was was maddening. It was mind. It was yeah, mind and, and there was one. There's one product that is has not perform has not done you know exactly what they were hoping. Um, but you know, if in in a very short dated trade can potentially do okay. I think and I think it's XVZ as I recall. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, uh, there there's a few of them out there. Uh, that try and and like not have uh, there was a one called Xfix that tried to only be contango, which was always interesting, but um, the it, it, so it tried to only collect the roll and not have vol exposure, which oh. is kind of interesting. Only be um, contango, I like that. It didn't work. Yeah, it was Xfix. <laughs> it's a theoretically it, interesting. I said I don't know how practical that is, but it's theoretically it did, it interesting. Didn't work. Yeah, it didn't. Work. I've, I've never um, heard of it, so chance. I guess it did not was not a resounding success. So um, XVZ still trades, but it, it you know it hasn't done what they were hoping it would do over its life, and um, so you know I really don't have uh, I really don't see a lot out there. Yeah, um, I don't know how you the can... answer is essentially no, and um, you know your best bet is to try and you know do it like the Thompsons do, which is uh, you know try and and strategically go long and short instead of. Just constantly being long, uh, it just you, trying to be constantly long is not going to make you money long term. Yeah, at least if you're playing in the futures, it's a little bit more straightforward. You can yeah. see where the curve is each month. Okay, I'm buying it here. It's more elevated compared to this one. You kind of have an idea where your future is going to, where you know how that's going to play out because of the term structure. So it's not quite the mystery, <laughs> you know, that some of the other ones are where they just erode for no reason. So yeah, if you if you're if you're if you're if you can handle the futures, if that doesn't turn you off or turn your stomach, then the futures is probably the uh, the least. 
least scary way to go uh, for Correct. that prospect. I, I just realized I never paid off our poll for our listeners. Uh, they agree with the uh, win, Mark. 38% choosing the win straddle. Oh, good uh, job, listeners. 29%. Uh, way say, to go, listeners. I think a couple of votes just came into the win, so they're obviously listening live. 29% saying Disney. Uh, I can see that one, too. That one's been has some potential to yeah. move five bucks. It's not usually a big mover. It's been kind of around that 100 level for a while. Now that the deal's closed, there's no more news. Yeah, that's kind of been the big driver. Uh, six, 17% going SeaWorld and 16% close fight for WWE. So it's got another day or so, you guys. I like the clo- the punniness of the close fight. Yes. It is indeed. See, excellent work. You like what excellent I did there, sir? Excellent work there. Excellent work there. You like what I did there. All right, we got. I let's do. let's squeeze in one more listeners because the listener because they got the love and they got the questions. Um, J J Tac, he's got a suggestion. Maybe this is for your VXX made easy, Mark. Uh, he says, looks like call front spreads. You know, so short one near out of the money, long two. For so he means the old short one by two listeners. If you're confused, uh, in VXX are the best way to hedge long term VXX puts. Uh, that way you're covered against a blow-up, but you're not shelling out a ton for straight-up calls or verticals. So interesting. He's kind of he's kind of flipping that coin a little bit, Mark. We've been talking lately because of that big VIX call spread about reasons you may want to own some VIX upside and how you could best do it. Obviously, the, the use case you come up most of the time is because you have those puts, right? And you want to have something in your back mm-hmm. pocket against a blow-up. Uh, is this something you guys outline in your VXX Made Easy, the, uh, the old one-by-two or – you know, I, I'm not a – I've seen MRA put out some things like that. I really like that when vol is real high in VXX. Um, it's not as much something I like in kind of a normal environment that we're looking at right now because you never know when that thing could just take a dive. Yeah, you know, I, I could maybe see doing it that way if you got a hedge over the long term, you know. It, yeah. Because if you're just buying calls or verticals up there against whatever you got on, you're, you're, you're yeah, throwing away a lot I, of money. I really like that for – I use um, front spreads for the the actual VIX product all the time because it has a floor – it has, you know, not a floor floor but a de facto floor in the product. So whereas, you know, you can get a runner in, in, in VXX and have all kinds of problems. Yeah, yeah, uh, but you got the long too, so you know, uh, so you got you got the net long units to the upside. So if you do get if that call spread comes into play, the seventy ninety, <laughs> you're looking pretty good on that, uh, yeah, on that, yes. on that front spread. So I could see what you're thinking there. Interesting yeah. suggestion. I, yeah, we have, we talked about one by twos in VIX Legion times, but we never talked about it in VXX. So interesting suggestion there, uh, Mister. What was the name there? JTAC. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll maybe we'll talk about it some more as we keep on rolling to our final segment. It's time to break out. The crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, everybody. That music means it's time for our final segment. It is time for the crystal ball. Mark, we have a bit of a weird one this week because the last time we sat around together to talk volatility was actually in the middle of the week last week at your oh, yeah. Pro Trader Summit. So we didn't really have a prediction for uh, this Friday. So we can't really pick a winner. Our last prognostications were I was at 11.85 and uh, you were at uh, 11. I didn't I think I think Andrew didn't Andrew cart me and I, I come in at like 11.80. <laughs> came uh, in, yeah, he came in by like that, a nickel, uh, I, I believe. So we won't count yeah. that. Because there's no carping allowed on the show. Uh, but, uh, well, yeah. Oh, so boy, we're all wrong. We're all wrong anyway. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, we're multiple handles off here. Uh, but that said, I'll, I'll be magnanimous, sir. I'm feeling generous today. It's a nice, beautiful oh, day. Oh, thank you. What a lovely studio. boy. I you shall are. allow you, sir, to go first. What are you feeling for this time next week, Vixland? Uh, what did I guess last week? Well, our last guess we have from you is 11.55, and that was a week and a half ago. I'm going to say 11.55. <laughs> I had a feeling you might want to stick with that one. It's uh, a good one. You know, it's, it's a good a one going one. into that week. It's not a bad one. Remember, listeners, as we mentioned before, we got uh, next week. The yeah, fourth. We'll, we'll, be the ho- we'll be the coming into the holiday weekend, so or week, the truncated holiday week. So, Val, usually not catching a bid. 
in that time, as we're finishing off the show here, Bix Cash is breaking through the 13 half handle down to about 13.35 or so. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, chances are it could erode even further today as most of the indices have now turned to the green. So any bid there was left for Bix. Yeah, everything is green yeah, now. Everything's green now. So it's not, not looking good for Vix Bulls right now. Uh, so yeah, 13.40, 13.35 right around now. So two handles lower than that. Not exactly crazy. Um, I'm going to be... You know, just because, just because of our old buddy, Mr. D in the Washington, you never know what's going to come out there. I'm going to go a little bit north of that. I'm going to say, I'm going to say just, just a touch north of the 12 hand. I'm going to say 12.05. There we go. All right. So, I like that. Uh, I, th- I think you've got a good shot too. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not upset about that. Uh, no. I had a feeling you're going to go crazy low this time. Yeah. And, why not? Uh, so that's, that's why I let you go for it. Yeah. See how generous I am, sir. The generosity I have here. Just knows no bounds. Unfortunately, listeners, we have come to the end of this epic journey through the world of volatility. We talked some good, some bad, some fun, all sorts of good stuff here. Uh, But before we go, Mr. Meatball, what are you guys cooking up over there in the land of the pitzer? Uh, We are cooking up all sorts of funness. Uh, Right now, we've got directional option trading made easy that you can uh you can get at and uh we're uh we're just having ourselves a great time having yourselves a great time if you want to join the party i can speak to that last part listeners they do have a good time yeah. when they get together the pro trade they do. You, it's you, a can lot just, of time. you can just pro listen to summit was a blast you can just listen to the cacophony in the background of our recordings from that and you it was a good time people were having a good, a good time. time mr meatball was having a good time i could i could uh, confess to that as yeah. well how did your i know I, I haven't checked in with you since the three days were concluded how did the whole thing unfold yeah it was it was great we're gonna need a bigger room next year it's a good problem, right? It's, good problem to have. It's a great problem to have, yeah. Get on and, over to uh, optionpit.com, register for some of that stuff, and then you too can experience the cacophonous joy that is the Pro Trader, Trader Summit. Summit. And on behalf of myself and the Meatball, I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, and subscribing. We'll be back here a little bit. I'm not done yet. No, the, the Southern Studio is still going. We'll be back in about half an hour with a little bit of Twifo. Uh, and until then, we'll see you next week for more. Volatility Views. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 